All right. So um, last, I wanted to show you number nine on your uh, work energy and power worksheet. Um, it says a 50 kilogram ball is thrown from a window with an initial velocity of eight meters per second at an angle of 30 meters above the horizontal. Okay. Well, I'm just going to move this over a little bit. So what's the kinetic energy of the ball at the top of its flight? And we can ignore air drag. I'm, I'm going to ignore energy dissipated. Um, what is the speed when it is three meters below the window? Um, okay. And C, does the answer to A or B depend on the angle? Uh, what a great problem. This is good. Uh, it combines a lot of the key ideas you've learned this semester. Um, let's see here. So, let's see. Um, well, let's take care of this initial velocity thing. Um, when, when, an, when a projectile is launched, this projectile is launched at an angle with a speed of 8 meters per second, right? Well, we can consider the horizontal speed at that moment and the vertical speed at that moment. And these two vectors would add to our 8 meters per second that is at a 30 degree angle. So I should be using the word velocity here. What I should say is my 8 meters per second velocity at the 30 degree angle is a combination of my horizontal velocity in the x direction at that moment and my vertical velocity in the y direction at that moment. So the, the, this is called horizontal component of, in, the, in this case it's 8 meter per second, but it's, it's my initial velocity that's at a funny angle. Okay, and that's how I run it. It did a pretty good job. Um, this symbol here with the little y is my vertical velocity. It's essentially my initial vertical velocity. So it's my vertical component of my initial velocity. And you can do this for, for the velocity at any moment in time. You can break up a vector into its component pieces. And it makes sense to have one piece in the horizontal direction, one piece in the vertical direction, okay? Um, now, in order to find the horizontal and vertical components of my velocity here, when this object is first launched, you just use sine and cosine. It's really no big deal. Um, sine, 30 degrees, is going to be my y component over my 8 meter per second velocity. So, therefore, my y component is going to be 8 meter per second times sine 30. In this case, it's not 30. I think I made a mistake. It's, uh, what is it? Oh, it is 30. Very nice. That makes it easy. Good. So it's going to be what? 4 meters per second or something? Yeah, sine 30 is 1 half, so it's going to be 4 meters per second. And... To find my, uh, the other component, my horizontal component, which is actually what's useful here. This, the vertical component, we don't need. The reason we need the horizontal component is because the horizontal velocity of a, of a projectile 
as as a projectile is in the air, ask yourself, does the horizontal speed change ever for a projectile while it's in the air? If we ignore air resistance, um, and as you saw in the lab, it didn't matter. It, the, we got a, an X versus T graph for a projectile that was just like your battery powered vehicle lab that tells us that for a projectile, the horizontal velocity just doesn't change. And I suppose if the projectile was going faster, um, air resistance would become more important. But for our purposes, we, we threw a projectile in the room and, and took video of it. And you could see that it was very nearly constant velocity. Um, anyway, to find that horizontal component, you would simply use cosine. And you get Vx over your hypotenuse, which is 8 meters per second. Uh, when setting this up, you can just refer to this triangle here. Um, this is the right angle. This is the hypotenuse. And if I'm looking at the 30 degree angle, my x component is cosine. My y component is sine. I think it's easier when you know an angle to first identify the side opposite the angle you know. That's always going to be sine. And then later I do the cosine. That's just me though. Um, so my x component is going to be 8 meter per second times cosine of 30 degrees. And I think that's going to be radical 3 over 2. So v in the x direction is going to be 4 uh, radical 3 uh, meters per second. Okay? And this is important because this horizontal uh, velocity isn't going to change while the projectile is in the air. And for part A in this problem, when a projectile reaches its maximum height, um, is it moving up or down anymore at that moment? No. When, it, when an object is at maximum height, by definition, at that instant in time, it's no longer moving up or down. It was moving upwards, and due to, due to the force of gravity, it slowed down while moving up, and then it reached its maximum height before it started moving down at a faster rate. So there was a moment there where the y velocity is going to be zero. So this y component is really only when the object is launched, and then later there will be another moment in time when the, when the speed downward is equal to this upward speed that it had when it was launched. But when, when the object's at its maximum height, there, the y velocity is going to be zero at that moment. But there is always going to be the same horizontal velocity, meaning 4 radical 3 meters per second. So at all moments in time, that's going to be the horizontal velocity. And when the object's at max height, that's, that's the speed at that moment in time. Okay, The speed is going to be how fast your projectile is going. So if we draw a flow diagram now, see with energy, we're more concerned with the speed of an object. Now, let's say this is the window. Right? There's a window. And here's the projectile before it's launched. Okay? At the instant it's launched with some velocity v, right? And then later, at some time t, you've got. We've got the projectile one meter down here. Now, we don't really care about the path that the projectile took. Um, we just know that it's one meter below where it was when it was launched. 
Okay. So there's the projectile. And our system would be the projectile, whatever it is. And the gravity field, and we're ignoring any dissipating energy. That is energy leaving our system through air resistance, which would be the only thing here I can think of. Um, all right. So the tricky thing about this is uh, in the beginning, our objects are moving with an initial velocity. So we, have, we don't have to worry about elastic in the beginning or in the end because we don't have elastic molecules here. Um, but we got EG in the beginning. We have EK in the beginning. And then between these moments in time, we're ignoring a disk so we don't have to worry about it. Um, in the end, let's make this, this height here, zero EG. It's not on the ground, but we don't care. Um, so I'm gonna call that level my zero EG reference line. That is one meter below the height of, height of where the projectile was launched. So I only have EK in the end, right? And um, so my equation for my energy flow diagram is E gravitational. In the beginning, I'll put an I for initial plus E kinetic initial has to equal my E K in the end. Okay. And um, I pretty much know everything I need to know, I think. Um, I can just start writing my equations. Uh, M, G, uh, delta H in the beginning plus one half M, V in the beginning squared it has to equal one half M, V in the end squared, right? And I know my change in height is one meter. I think actually, now that I, now I think I read the problem, I think it says three meters for this. So I should probably fix that. Um, this value here is actually three meters. Okay. So I got three meters for my change in height. Uh, mass cancels out of every turn because the mass of the object doesn't matter here. Um, G you should know it is 10 newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared. Uh, doesn't, doesn't matter what units you use there because either way these units can become joules. Um, and then my initial velocity was at, at that angle, that 30 degree angle was uh, 8 meters per second. Don't forget to square it. And then the only thing missing is my speed at the end moment in time when the projectile is a meter below where it was launched. Okay? And as you can see, this energy flow diagram does not depend on the angle the that the object's launched, which is interesting. Um, our solution for, for part A depends on the angle the projectile was launched. When we found uh, the kinetic energy when the object's at max height, the angle of the initial velocity definitely mattered. But in order to find the speed when the object is, is three meters below where it was launched, you could launch the object at, at any angle, and um, you would still have the same solution, which is pretty cool. So 
does the answer to A or B depend on the angle? Well, only the answer to, to problem A depends on the angle. Anyway, hope you enjoy that problem. Uh, it's a beautiful one, and I hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.